guys what's up welcome back to itouch app reviewers in this video i've got a pretty cool one for you guys ios 14 beta 4 has just been released to developers i've got it right here on my iphone 11 pro the public beta should be releasing today or in about two hours around 4 p.m eastern time so i've been using this on here for about an hour now i installed it right when it came out at one and i can tell you overall this feels so much smoother than beta 3. Uh, even just pulling this down here, this shade right here, just look how uh, smooth that looks. Uh, in the other betas, it was a little bit glitchy. Uh, it would kind of hang for a second. So this is much better. Swiping between app pages feels about the same. Opening apps feels a little bit quicker though. So here is how big the update was. It was 624.9 megabytes. So not huge. Didn't take too long to update. But in this video, I'm going to show you all the new features, all the bugs, everything that's resolved. And I'll let you guys know if you should install the public beta later today, or if you should just hold off a little bit longer. So one of the main things that Apple resolved in this is the 3D touch issue, which I know a lot of you guys were having. You DM'd me on Twitter, left comments on the other videos. Uh, and basically 3D touch is now back and working just fine on those supported devices. Apple also fixed a bug in the app store where if you uh, entered here and you didn't give full access to the keyboard, uh, it would just crash here. This is fully working now, no issues. Now, something that's brand new in this update is this new settings menu right here called exposure notifications. So this is its own COVID area. Uh, I shouldn't even be saying that on here. I don't want to get demonetized, but right there you guys can click and uh, see all of your exposure notifications. This is new to this iOS version. So if you like that, it's right there uh, if you wanna use that. There's also a new widget in here for the Apple TV, which is pretty cool. This is courtesy of someone uh, on one of the forums. Pretty cool to see this coming to the widgets. Of course, it's in another language, so I don't know what it says, but still, that's Apple TV widget. Now, if you're using a phone and it's got the language set to one that's from right to left, the app library section actually uh, had some issues with that before, uh, but those are all resolved and they look fine. Uh, according to Apple in their change log. So that has been fixed. Now with HomeKit, all devices and accessories are now reachable while your device is locked. That is something that uh, was not available before, but it has been fixed in this update. Another thing that has been fixed is marking a blocked sender. Uh, that's no longer disabled after updating. So you guys can use that feature after you update to this new version. And in Maps, there is a known issue that I've seen a lot of people posting about already on the forums. Uh, basically, if you open Maps and you try to click the uh, search bar just by opening this right here it will crash but for me it has not done that so it seems to be very specific to people's phones i recommend doing a reboot after this to see if it fixes now this is an interesting one in apple's changelog but in the measure app uh, the automatic person height measurement using ipad pro 12.9 inch and the ipad pro 11 inch is now available so it didn't have that before now it has it so i guess if you use an ipad and you want to measure someone's height you guys can do that now i don't want to get too far into this but there's some, been some networking improvements on the phone so if you had any issues before uh, especially with HTTPS proxies, those have been resolved. Now this is particularly for if you have an iPad with a keyboard that's Bluetooth, uh, but the pen tools will no longer activate unexpectedly. Apparently that was happening to some of you guys. Uh, that is fixed. Also in FaceTime in the phone, if you're FaceTiming with someone using picture in picture mode, uh, your video no, no longer pauses, so that is nice. However, I don't know if you guys have noticed, but up top here where it says, you know, something's been using your camera or microphone, uh, sometimes it'll just say system instead of phone or Snapchat or whatever. This is actually a known issue for FaceTime as well. Uh, for only calls placed over Wi-Fi networks, if it's over cellular, it'll say phone, but if it's on Wi-Fi, it'll say system. So uh, if you see that, that's just a known bug, probably be fixed next time. There is a known issue in the shortcuts app where if you're using an automation uh, one after another, like consecutively, they might not run if they're scheduled immediately after one another. So leave a little buffer in between, at least for now, if you use this. There is a bug that I can't replicate, but it says if you search for timer with Siri and tap a suggestion to start a timer, it doesn't start it as expected. So kind of weird there. I tried it, couldn't re replicate it, works just fine for me. So your mileage may vary there. Now, Apple's been working really hard on widgets, uh, and this update actually has a ton of changes. So all widgets must be rebuilt using the iOS 14 to 4 SDK and won't run on previous versions. So if you're using an app before that had some widget for some reason, uh, it has to be rebuilt now. So if one of them's broken, that's probably why. Some widgets might also appear as blank after updating. Uh, the workaround is to remove the widgets and then add them again. It'll fix it. And then when set to my location, the weather widget might display weather for a different location. That's a known issue, still very annoying. Another issue is that the weather widget might actually take a little too long to display data. 
they're working on that as well. Now, some widgets might also disappear from your home screen after updating the iOS uh, 14 beta 2 or later. The workaround is to just re-add them back, um, but that is very odd. Hopefully they fix those bugs because uh, average users will not want to deal with that. Font size currently doesn't adjust automatically for different device sizes for your widgets, so keep that in mind. If they look a little weird, that's why. Widgets aren't blocked for screen time when their parent app is blocked. So if for some reason your kid is using your phone that's on beta software, uh, they can uh, bypass that a little bit. Now, widget kit extensions can continue to access location services for up to 15 minutes after being viewed if their app has been granted the while using the app location access. So keep that in mind, 15 minutes after, uh, and it can still track your location. Another issue where you can't resize an existing widget. I haven't seen that one, but if you remove it and re-add it, it works fine. You might need to reconfigure your widgets after updating to beta three or later. Now, here are some cool things that are fixed for the widgets. The quick actions menu no longer appears behind the widget overlay. Conditions displayed in the weather widget now match the conditions displayed in the weather app because some people were opening this and then they'd head into here and they would be different. So obviously mine's still updating, here it goes, um, but they would not match up. Like this would say 78, this would say 79. Those are all fixed now. Another glitch that people were having is where they would be looking at this and if there was a major dip in temperature, for the next day, it would switch to Celsius for some reason. That has been fixed, thank goodness. Now, if you're a developer and you install an app using Xcode, it might not appear in the recently added category of the app library. So right here under recently added, it won't be there. And apps which you've chosen to offload might unexpectedly appear in the recently added category. So in here, if you see some weird stuff, that's why they're working on it, but for right now, it's a little glitchy. And lastly here for this, uh, the spotlight might not appear as expected. The workaround for this, just reboot your device, it'll work. Now the last big thing here is email. So if you guys use the Mail app on your phone, there are a couple known issues. Mail can't currently connect to SMTP servers that support only auth login commands. Probably doesn't apply to too many of you. Uh, Mail can't currently connect to SMTP servers that require fully qualified host names during HELO. Again, that probably doesn't apply to you guys, but one that might is that Microsoft Exchange and Outlook.com accounts don't display an error if the wrong account type is used during login. So the workaround for this is to use outlook.com type for Hotmail and outlook.com accounts and the Microsoft Exchange type for Office 365 accounts. So keep that in mind if you guys use those. Uh, that is going to be very important if you want to get your email. So those have been a bunch of the new changes and features. If there's any new ones, I will be having an update video coming very soon uh, going over everything uh, about this update. I will say my phone has been super cool to the touch since this update and after rebooting it. Um, so I'm assuming battery life is probably pretty decent on this update uh, just because my phone is not heating up very much at all and that usually means the processor is not doing much. So I will let you guys know how that goes. Check my channel often for the uh, community polls and I'll let you guys know what the results are. So that's all I got for this video guys. If you liked it, hit with a big thumbs up and subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.